exercise 13. In this exercise, we take a look at Creo 2.0's capabilities with designing a bottle. We're just going to use the sweep tool for this and a couple additional tools too we'll look at as well. Here's a picture of what it should look like when we're completed with it. We may not get to all the details in here like that, but uh, nonetheless, the bulk of the bottle is our goal. So let's begin. I'm just going to start a new part file. We'll call this E13. Hit OK. I'm just going to resize it to the screen. And we begin by selecting the top plane. Start a sketch. Take the line tool and draw a line vertical and change it to 8 inches. That's our path. Let's go ahead and hit the green check mark for OK. Now what we need to do is we need to make some um, side profiles essentially. In this case, um, guide curves. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the uh, top plane again. Start a sketch. And I'm going to proceed to sketch a spline from the bottom line here. Just draw it up. And now it's a little bit higher than our original line, so we'll go ahead and just change it to 8 inches high. It can go higher, it doesn't matter, it's fine as long as it, uh, it's not shorter. If it's shorter, that's when this uh, sweep will stop then. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to leave it there. I just had two, three, three points. Okay. Now I'm going to take the right side and draw that. And that's going to consist of basically kind of like a pistol grip, like a wind, uh, bottle, spray bottle. And so, again, top plane, start a sketch. Take the spline tool and over here on the right, click, drag it up in a little bit and give it a nice uh, shape with a couple of additional spline points. And again, you can make that 8 inches high. If you need to adjust any of these points, you can just click on them and drag them to relocate them. Once you got to your liking, go ahead and hit OK. Now in the book, it actually goes through and shows um, all the dimensions that you'd want to add if you wanted to make it look exactly like what it is in the book. But this is a freeform project, so you can do it however you like. Hit OK. All right, now that we have the three curves created, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Sweep and go to References, select the center of the trajectory. And then hold control down on your keyboard and select the additional two curves. Now up here, you could go ahead and click on create or edit sweep section. Go ahead and click on that. It should bring us normal too. Let's take the line tool because we're going to draw one half of the bottle first. And so we'll actually draw a center line through there, or line through there. And then take the spline tool and draw the base profile. Technically what we're doing is drawing the bottom here of the bottle. Add a couple additional spline points. I'm a believer in uh, less is more, but if you have a very detailed sort of a model, then obviously you're going to have more spline points. One additional little thing I'd like to do here is if I go to the centerline tool and at each end add a vertical centerline. Middle click two times. Now go up here to the tangent constraint and add a tangent constraint between the spline and the vertical line. In each one you'll get a little T. So again, make sure it's the tangent constraint selected. Select the center line and then select the spline. And notice how it smooths it out a little bit better. With that in there, it's going to look, it'll have a nicer transition when we mirror it over to the other side once it's completed. Okay, at this point, we could go ahead and hit the OK button. And now we have a preview of half of our bottle. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit the green check mark. Now if there's any issues, if you're not seeing a preview, you might have to adjust the guide curves so they don't overlap perhaps the path, which is in the center trajectory. 
but uh, should look similar to what I have there. Okay, at this point, now we're going to look at putting in curvature continuous fillets. Now, if we go to the round tool here, and if you go to um, sets, you'll see that there's under circular here, there's conic, there's C2 continuous, and D1, D2 continuous, D1, D2, C2. We're going to go with uh, C2 curvature continuous. And actually, before I do that, let's first go with a circular and select that edge. We'll get up to about 0.25. Click 0.25. Again, because we're not following the same constraints here, yours might not accommodate a 0.25. So if you want to go a little bit lower, like 0.125, to accommodate a fill, that's fine. If you're following the book to the T with the dimensions, you should have no problem putting a 0.25 radius on it. Um, at this point, I'm going to hit the green check mark to apply. Now, it doesn't look all that different when you first glance at it, but in fact, when it's just a regular radius, if we do an analysis, if we do an um, analysis here, you'll find curvature analysis and shaded curvature. Select shaded curvature and select the faces holding control. Now what we see here is with the curvature control turned on, let me bring the scale over, you can see how harsh that fillet is. It's, it's right at the 0.25 threshold, whereas everywhere else, with the exception of the very bottom and the very top, we have a nice curvature. It's very smooth, the transition. Okay. I cancel out of there. Let's try and do something about that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just delete that fillet. Let's go back to the model and fillet tool, or round, I should say. And again, we'll go sets and change it to C2 continuous. Make sure you set, change it to 0.25 and now I'll go ahead and select that edge. Alright, at this point let's go ahead and hit apply. Now let's go ahead and find the analysis tools, curvature, and control select faces. Now you can see it's not just one constant curvature. It transitions. It's like it uses a spline instead of a radius. So, in other words, it's non-analytical geometry versus analytical being lines and arcs. And so it transitions smoother, gives you a better appearance, especially if, um, if you were to do an analysis, like, for example, if you're designing an automobile. And if you've ever seen a shiny automobile painted a piano black, and if you have tube lights, fluorescent tube lights above it, you can see how the tube lights run over the surface. And uh, without a regular, with a regular fillet, what you have is you have a, it's kind of a harsh transition of those tube lights. It doesn't look quite right. So in the automotive industry, you'll see for aesthetic purposes in other areas too, you'll find they use curvature continuous fillets, so the transition is smoother. Okay, at this point, let's go ahead and do it. Put one on the front too. Go back to the model, round. And we'll set this to, um, again, C2. And let's make it a little bit smaller, because there's not as much room at the top there. So 0.125. Again, if your geometry can't accept that, then you might want to change it. And let's hit the green check. All right. The next thing I'd like to show you how to create is a label recess, a slight recess that's just underneath here and follows the curvature of the model. To do this, first of all, let's offset one of the planes. If we take the top plane, and actually let me turn on my planes here. We take the top plane and go to the plane tool up here. Click on that. And I could offset it just by grabbing a little dot and dragging it up. As long as it clears it, about two inches should be fine. Any distance really is fine, as long as it clears the surface. Now we could go ahead and start a sketch on that new surface that we created. Take the line tool and at the base, near the base, a little offset from the bottom, draw a horizontal line across. Make sure it doesn't extend past the boundaries of the bottle though. I should make it three inches. Okay, and at this point now, find the spline tool once again.
click and try and follow the outline edge of the bottle. And up here you're going to have to put a lot more points in to control it to get it to conform and then close it, middle click. Okay, at this point let's go to the fillet tool and click and put fillets on, on both of these curves. And you could put in your own radius if you want to change it. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. I like how it looks right now. Hit OK. And now I could take that. Uh, before I take that and extrude it, I first want to offset the surface on the top here. I'm going to click on the surface there. And we'll click on it a couple times until it turns green like that. And then find offset up here. Click on offset. And this allows us to offset a surface from it. We actually want it to go into the part a little bit. And probably around 0.04 deep. Hit apply. And now we could go to extrude. Select our profile. We want it to extrude down. And over here, find at the bottom we have extrude to select a point, curve, plane, or surface. Select that. Now if you right click here, there's a next option. And it should go to selecting. Let's try that again. Once it gets the right surface, you can kind of see it off the offset select there. Left click. And that will extrude it up to that surface. Now make sure you select remove material. And you can see the preview. And hit apply. Now that surface offset is still floating around in there. If you'd like, you just right click over here and hide it. You could actually click on the surface too and hide it. Let's put some radiuses in there. So go to the rounds tool, put in 0.03, and select the inner edge here just to smooth that out a little bit. And then one more over the top, same size. Because it's all tangent, it should go ahead and follow the contour. Okay. Now, if we wanted to put some uh, additional features in here, we could do that. Uh, for right now, though, let's go ahead and focus on uh, mirroring it across. I'm going to go ahead and select the backside face here. And actually, um, we're going to go to the mirror tool. So I can actually hold control and select all the features I want to carry over to the other side. And then go to uh, my mirror and select this back surface as the mirror plane. And hit apply. Okay, in this case, it didn't bring everything over as I'd hoped. Um, well, it's still, still thinking. Actually, it might be having some issues with that. Yep. Didn't like that fillet on there. We could also add the fillet later on. Let's go ahead and hit OK. Add a round. We'll delete that round. Cancel out. I'll go ahead and delete the round up here. Actually, let's try bringing it down. Let's see if we can bring it underneath the feature tree. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite like it down there. Oh, that's not because it's that's because it's not it. Okay, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and delete those rounds. Just like that, hit delete. Okay, and one on the top as well. It looks like we're having some issues with the rounds over here. Let's delete those as well. Okay. 
Okay, it also didn't bring over a label resets, which is actually fine because technically we don't want the label resets on the back. And let's go to the rounds tool. Let's get in. And we'll go to sets. C2 or 25. Alright, we could also try and add it up here. And play. Okay. Now at this point, let's go ahead and um, turn off the planes here. And we want to go ahead and put the neck on the bottle. So I'm going to select this top base and start a sketch. And draw the neck of the bottle. Again, if you have specific uh, dimensions you're following out of the book, you can go ahead and put those in. I'm going to change this to 0.75. Let me do it free form. And go ahead and extrude this. I want to be 0.75 high. Okay. Now the second half of this video, we'll actually look at how to put the threads in on the neck of the bottle. To do that, um, you could uh, tune into the uh, part two of E13, and this concludes this exercise.